Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Here we are always on the lookout for making crossbows and bows more compact. And this, for crossbows at least, automatically means you have to slim down the span of the throwing arms. And from my collection I have retrieved this one, which is the Lance Head F1. It's one of the slimmest, sleekest crossbows that I have in my collection. This one basically is a very early version. I think it carries the number, I, there it is. It has the number 009 on it. So uh, it's one of the first 10. The Lance Head F1, let me show you its features once again. Now, as you see, this crossbow is super, super slim. And that is because it doesn't really have regular throwing arms. What it has is it has torsion springs. You can actually see them inside here. Actually, the crossbow has a total of eight of them, and those are actually uh, coated steel springs. And they have attached a very complicated winch system, basically different, several different um, block and tackle uh, devices that actually allow this thing to have a huge power stroke of like 24 inches. That's a super long power stroke. This is basically a bullpup. See, here is the trigger. It's actually a very terrible trigger tech trigger system. So it's really high quality. It was an expensive crossbow. It's 2,500 euros, and you can actually buy it in my store at gogun.de. It actually comes in this wonderful case, including the winch and tools and basically everything really cool package. I did a full review on this crossbow a while ago and I put the link down there for you so that you can watch it again if you want to. In any case, as you see, it is now fully cocked and there is a an arrow sitting inside of it. Um, there is a lot of power stored in these uh, coil springs now. So let's shoot it and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Whoa, serious power, wow. <laughs> so I thought to myself, maybe these torsion coil springs are the way for a bow or a crossbow too. So what I did is I went ahead and found these. <laughs> these are actually springs for rope starters on like lawn mowers or chainsaws or something where you can just simply put a So these are there to really retrieve the string, once you once you pulled it out, it needs to go back inside. You will find them in vacuum cleaners too. And, and these are basically springs that are tensioned like this. So you just tension them, as you see, then you, this is the way how you store energy in them. They're actually nasty little beasts. Everyone who has once tried to repair one of those knows how tricky is it to fumble them in. So, <laughs> funny little things. And this is actually how they look like once they're coiled. Not all the way, but almost. As you see, this is how they look like when you buy them. And this is how they look like once they uh, jumped out of their case. <laughs> so I put one of them in a, a housing and tested it and actually found that it's fairly weak. It only has about, well, three kilograms of a maximum draw, like 6.6 .6 pounds. And uh, that, of course, is not enough to really make a crossbow out of it. You would need 20 of them or so to make a halfway functional crossbow. And I didn't have that many. So therefore, I decided to use like six of them and put them into a bow-like design. So now the target is not to make a small crossbow, but to make a small bow. And I sat down and actually came up with the design and built it and uh, finished it. Let me show you what I came up with. The micro torsion spring powered bow. <laughs> Probably the craziest bow that I've ever made. And it is entirely powered by coil springs. What else? A new type of micro bow. Let me show you its features. So as you can see, it has two powerhouses. These are these wheels here. And actually I can unwind them for you and show them to you how they work. So this is how they work. And you can actually spin each one three full turns before the spring is fully coiled. And of course, there is a certain amount of pretension on this here. So this needs to be held back. It has an arrow rest in here and a long string that actually allows you to pull it out as far as a normal bow, even though the size is really, really compact. And each one of these powerhouses actually holds three of these uh, springs that are, of course, tensioned simultaneously. 
Yeah, and it's it has a D loop here, so you shoot it with a bow release. So <laughs> here is the arrow, fully knocked, of course. And now I can clamp on my bow release and shoot away. As you see, it's fully tensioned now. Well, lame, but functional. <laughs> I know, I know, it's poor performance. But it does work, and that's the proof of concept that I was looking for. Let me shoot it again for you. So once again, you lock it in. This you can also wrap around your wrist if you want to. And then you draw it out. And it's actually, it's actually not an easy draw. It's actually quite something. And then you can draw out until it works no more. And then you aim and shoot. <laughs> Just like you would with a normal bow. And it resets in the, original, uh, in the original position. So you can shoot the next one as long as it's not been falling apart, like it does most of the times. <laughs> People ask me, how do you string it? Well, it's super easy. I can simply take this off and show you. Okay. So, now without the string, you can see these are the two powerhouses. And you can see that you can actually quite easily turn them and release them. And actually, you can twist them a total of three times. And the same goes for this one too, of course. So they're independent. And I put some screws in here so I can attach the loops from the string, which is basically just a length of paracord. So what you do is you put one end over this and then you wrap it around three times. Two, three, okay. And then you move it over to the other side. You lock the loop to it and you wrap it around three times as well. Okay, that's it. And now all you have to do is pull out and pull them over the string stoppers here. And then you can synchronize them a little bit so everything is nicely centered and you're done. Very easy procedure. Now why is this not performing better since it obviously has a serious draw weight? Well, several reasons. Reason number one, it has to move a whole lot of mass. These springs are heavy. Six of them, you can really feel the weight. I mean, really feel the weight. Plus also all the wood that has to be accelerated as well and all the string that also has to be accelerated. Therefore, it is just, the performance is just not very high. Also, you know, don't forget the fact that these springs probably move fairly slowly. And you can actually feel that there is a lot of inertia once these hit the string stoppers. That actually is a serious jam, you know, so it really slaps hard against these. Therefore, I had to make them really big and also use really, really fat screws to secure them to the frame. So, so there is a serious amount of momentum stored in the wheels and not in the arrow. Now, how come, how come the performance of this thing is so weak and the performance of the Landsat F1 is so good. Well, the main reason I firmly believe lies into the block and tackle system that they applied. See, they have eight of them and I only have uh, six. Mine are probably weaker. Theirs turn just 90 degrees, the wheels. So they only turn like a quarter of a full turn. And this one actually uh, needs three full turns to do this. So the mass that has to be moved for one shot here is much larger than in the Landsat. But also the block and tackle make sure that the speed of the arrow is much higher than the retraction speed of the springs. The springs just have the strength and the block and tackle add the speed. And this lacks the, here. So this means there is no block and tackle system. The arrow cannot move faster than the wheels can at this point and the springs can. And therefore this is the reason why this is not performing any better. Is there actually room for a serious application? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. If we take the Landsat technique, so if, the, if we use their springs, just not eight of them, but maybe two or four of them, right? And attach them like to an adder-like design and also use block and tackle so that the speed advantage is still there. I believe that could be a game changer. I think that would create a, a repeating, fast shooting, 
very, very compact crossbow and it will be the first of its kind. I hope that the team at Landsat really thinks about this and uh, adapts their technology to create a throwing arm for the Cobra R9 platform. That would be amazing. So what do I think about this new invention of mine? Well, it's not legit in this, con in this condition, but I think it looks super cool. I think it, it just looks like a bow from out of Star Wars. <laughs> well, maybe not made in wood, but kind of plastic. <laughs> anyway, it's functional, but it's stupid and silly, and that's why we all love it here. And I believe you do too, don't you? Anyway, <laughs> that's it for today. Thanks and... Okay... Bye bye. <laughs>